Hello, and welcome to our hot item on the fair share topic. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome two guests, Veronique Ney from the Electronic Communications Department of ILR, the Institut Luxembourgeois de Régulation, and Christophe Mertens from the Net Neutrality Platform Monitoring and AI section of BNETSA, the German regulator. Veronique and Christophe are the co-chairs of the Beric Open Internet Expert Working Group, which has recently published its views on the so-called fair share discussions. Veronique and Christophe, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. In February, the European Commission has launched its exploratory consultation on the future of the electronic communication sector and its infrastructure. Barak has submitted a response to this consultation. In addition to this, we published an annex which provided additional information and clarifications to the sections of the consultation on a fair contribution by all digital players. However, it should be noted that Barak has dealt with the idea of payment from CAPS towards telcos already at several instances before the European Commission's consultation. One is in 2012, in the context of the World Conference on International Telecommunications, when ISPs had proposed a system of sending network pays. At that time, Barak assessed this proposal and concluded that deviating from the current principles might be of significant harm to the Internet ecosystem, as ISPs could exploit their termination monopoly. Two was in 2020 with the preliminary assessment, and now I would like to pass the floor to Christoph. Yeah, thank you, Veronique. Well, as a next step, in October 2022, Varek will publish a preliminary assessment of the underlying assumptions of payments from large caps to ISPs. And in that paper, we assessed whether the underlying assumptions uh, in this debate are substantiated or not. And as a first point, we made clear that the traffic is requested and thus caused by ISPs customers and thus not caused by the caps. As a second point, uh, that we can often hear the underlying assumption that more traffic and increase in traffic translates into higher costs. And Barak, we consider that the debate about network investment, traffic volumes and cost drivers needs to be carefully analyzed. And we then clarified that first, in fixed networks, access networks, these networks exhibit a very low traffic sensitivity, whereas mobile networks experience some degree of traffic sensitivity. Another aspect is that typically IP interconnection agreements are about increasing the cost of the, the capacity of the IP interconnection link. These costs of increasing the IP interconnection link are very low. And thirdly, we pointed out that the costs of network upgrades for handling increased traffic volumes are low compared to total network costs. As a third underlying assumption, we pointed out that both CAPS and ISPs are mutually interdependent because telcos often assume that they depend more on caps than vice versa and which would then translate into an asymmetry when bargaining and we as Barrick stated as I said that there is a mutual interdependence uh, between both sides the demand from ISPs customers for content drives demand for broadband access and similar, the availability of broadband access drives the demand for content. A fourth underlying assumption in this debate is that CAPS um, 
the idea that ISPs uh, assume that the caps were free riding on ISPs infrastructures. Here, Barrack made clear that there is no evidence of free riding. Under competitive conditions, there is no room for free riding. And in 2017, but also in 2012, Barrack had referred to the competitive nature of IP interconnection markets. And a study from Vic Institute in 22 also confirmed these find findings. The costs for internet connectivity, they are typically covered. The ISP's customers pay for it. And with this, I would like to hand over back to Veronique. Yeah, thank you, Christoph. And then uh, regarding Barrack's response to the exploratory consultation, we would first like to share some remarks up front. The European Declaration of Digital Rights and Principles calls for a fair and proportionate contribution by all market actors to the cost of public goods, services and infrastructures. Currently, actors contribute in different ways to the Internet ecosystem. For instance, some provide access, backhaul or core networks, others digital infrastructures or IP transit services others content application and services, and others again provide digital skills or a combination thereof. Admittedly, working towards the objectives of the DDP will foreseeably cause growth of data traffic. Barak has considered that there is only a limited relationship between the growth of data traffic volume and the level of investments that must be made to reach a gigabit society. We also noted that the largest cost elements for network deployment relate to the access network, and these costs are typically recovered through access subscriptions. More specifically on IP interconnection, Barak is currently not aware of structural interconnection problems in relation to growing volumes of traffic attributed to CAPS. Therefore, Barak has not detected a market failure or market power exercise to the detriment of end users in the IP interconnection market. In its response to the consultation, Barak has also expressed reservations about mandatory financial contributions from CAPS to ISPs in the form of a sending network based regime. Regarding other forms of contribution mechanisms, for instance, funding mechanisms, concerns may arise, but any proposed functioning would have to be assessed in further detail. Barak also holds that any regulatory intervention requires a proper justification. Back to Christoph. Oh, thank you. Well, Barak then addressed several points of attention related to mandatory fine financial contributions from CAPS to ISPs. As a first point, we looked at competition. And we said that the introduction of a mandatory financial contribution from large caps to ISPs may distort competition between market actors. And it is likely to lead to a competitive disadvantage for small ISPs and for small caps. Smaller ISPs have a smaller number of end users and lower bargaining power a sending party network pays regime would make it possible for ISPs to exploit their physical termination monopoly. And this would likely increase their bargaining power. As a, uh, another uh, effect, uh, as regards end users, we said that a mandatory financial contribution from CAPS towards network uh, investments may impact on end users in very different ways. As a first point, we said that caps may pass on higher costs to their customers via higher prices for content subscriptions. 
Secondly, there may also be effects for internet access prices. Barrick has not covered any evidence that operators' costs were not fully covered, and neither is there any evidence of free riding. But if um, ISPs would get uh, a financial comp compensation, it would be uncertain how this additional financial contribution would be utilized by them. It might also be possible that depending on the degree of competition among ISPs, that an excessive cost recovery is competed away as prices for IAS might decrease. Higher revenues from mandatory payments might then be offset by lower prices. Another effect that may occur uh, with regard to end users may could be an impact on business users. The introduction of a mandatory payment from caps to network operators could impact business users and in particular small and medium-sized uh, companies. Why is this the case? Large caps, they typically provide content delivery networks and also cloud services. And thus, they could pass on higher costs to their customers. This will then affect all customers, regardless of their size, SMEs, content providers, but also public services. Such a cost pass on negatively impacts on the competitiveness and commercial viability of all these customers. Another effect could also be uh, an effect on QoS. The introduction of a regulatory regime on IP interconnection might lower the incentive, for example, to establish settlement-free peering agreements, direct interconnections, or to use IXPs. And a company observed in Korea that many content providers moved abroad with a content. This then leads to higher latency, obviously. Another effect that may occur is an effect on innovation. We could see that the internet has proven to be a driver of innovation with access available to caps and other end users without ISPs acting as gatekeepers by exploiting their termination monopoly on access networks. A contribution may reduce the incentives for CAPS to develop content and applications and may reduce the quality of existing services. There might be a risk that innovative applications are either developed outside the European Union are not provided within the European Union. And last but not least, we looked at the open internet. Given that the Declaration's commitment to protecting a neutral and open internet, Barrick would like to stress that respecting the principles of the open internet regulation is a fundamental aspect in this discussion. And the introduction of a mandatory contribution could, could limit the rights and obligations provided by Articles 3.1 and 3.3 of the Open Internet Regulation to protect end users' choice and to guarantee the continued functioning of the Internet ecosystem as an engine of innovation. And finally, unequal fees and imposing fees only to certain caps would probably not satisfy the general obligation of equal treatment of traffic without discrimination or interfering, interference pursuant to the first paragraph of Article 3.3 of the Open Internet Regulation. Finally, any measure proposed should comply with the provisions of the Open Internet Regulation. Thank you.
Well, I mean, Christophe and Veronique, this was a, a very detailed um, uh, overview of, of the positions of Beric across the ages, let's say, seeing that there were several of them. And hopefully, um, you know, we're all grateful that you contributed to the different consultations and hopefully that will bring food for thought uh, to the European Commission in terms of what they decide to do. But certainly I take as a point the fact that we need to avoid all of the possible negative effects that you mentioned towards the sure. small ones, the yeah. users, the SMEs, the small telcos or ISPs, uh, because that would be contrary to everything that happened on the open yeah. internet so far. So thank you so much for your contribution. And I hope that we you continue to feed into this debate and that it brings its fruits. Thank you.